Georgian Bay, and the ultimate proving grounds. How bad do you want it? When we say enough is enough, what are you willing to endure to succeed? For us, the answer is simple. Whatever it takes. Strap in and enjoy the ride on our hunt for the Giants of Georgian Bay. Previously on Giants of Georgian Bay Monster Muskie Mission. Last year on opening weekend, we came into contact with a true Georgian Bay monster. A muskie easily over the 50 inch mark, followed multiple times before finally biting in the eight. But just as quickly as the bucktail disappeared into her mouth, the fish was off and gone. And the time has finally come. Four days, one goal. We are on a monster muskie mission. Other than the fish, Georgian Bay is known for its winds. Strong enough to make the trees grow sweeping to one side, but also strong enough to topple a tent with ease. Overnight and into the morning, the winds kept collapsing our tent in on us, making it hard to sleep. We opted to sleep in a few extra hours before heading out to battle the elements. After attempting to cast a few spots, we realized that the wind had brought in cool water with it and the temperatures in all the locations we were fishing yesterday had dropped by at least 2 degrees. the wind and cool temperatures we opted to start trolling to avoid killing the trolling motor and cover more water to find where the fish had relocated to.
过饭。Growing the spots where we had seen musky previously resulted in nothing but pike. While still an awesome time, it's not what we are after. It was difficult to find the temperatures the musky had been relating to, and so we moved to more protected areas that we hoped would be warmer. move paid off. The area we had moved to was warmer and bait was stacked up in a small deep pool of the area. Seeing this, it was only a matter of time before a fish was going to bite. of action, we move closer to camp and the site of the original big fish sightings to finish off the day. Water temperatures were still too cool for where we had been finding the muskie and the action had seemed to cool off. That's
with our last day of the trip upon us, we knew we had to make it count. An early wake up revealed the water temperatures had dropped another 2 degrees overnight. From all the clues we had gathered over the past few days, we made a plan to only fish waters where the temperatures matched where we had found muskie previously. This limited the areas we could fish significantly and we were moving through fast, eliminating water that didn't meet our criteria. I don't know what it is. Come on, stay on. It's a pike. Yeah. The first area we located that matched our criteria did not disappoint. Oh, so dirty. Twice. Oh, and you got both fucking hooks in. Oh, there's one. Just came in. No, I can't come over there. I don't know if it spooked. It spooked a bit, but. There it is. Yeah. It's like it's something. Little guy. Like that? You can like fucking have that in here. Whoa! Something just hit it. Made a swirl. I think they're even grabbing hooks, like they're just smacking at it. After some additional searching, we managed to find a few more areas that fit the bill. Getting smaller, Colin. Disappointment to Pablo. After grinding the past four days, losing one ski on the jump and seeing multiple others, to finally hook one boat side for it just to come off seconds later was devastating. Time was running out for us to complete our goal of the trip. With enough time for one final spot, we gambled that a good looking area from day two that did not produce then would be warm enough now to hold a muskie. As we worked the weedy shoreline, there it was, rising up from the depths to take a look at our bucktails.
after falling for a few turns in the figure eight, just as quickly as it appeared, she had sunk back into the depths. Pulling out everything in our bag of tricks for the last few seconds of fishing before the trip was over, we decided to bust out the trolling rods for a couple passes to see if we could stir up one last bite. Although it's hard to accept, there is a reason why muskie are called the fish of 10,000 cats. We weren't able to catch the giant that we came here for, but we did see at least four fish over the 40 inch mark. On one of the hardest bodies of water in the world to catch muskie, and the changing conditions every day, we are happy with the number of muskie we were able to locate, but we're just missing that one piece of the puzzle to get them to bite. Maybe it was timing, maybe it was what we were presenting, or maybe these fish had no plans on eating at all. We had our chances at one bite every day, which is all you can ask for when fishing for muskie on the bay. The amount of water we were able to cover and learn will only help us the next time we come back, and with sharper hooks. How many times have you picked up a new bait from the store only to realize you have no idea how to use it? Lure manufacturers rarely include this information, but we're here to help. Our How to Fish series is your new source for lure instructions, made by those who use them and figured out how to get the results so you don't have to. No fluff, just the information you need. Learn how to master any bait or technique in less than 15 minutes. The new wave of fishing is here. Are you ready to catch it? <laughs>